Hello again. I recently did an image of the International Space Station, the ISS, with my telescope and a webcam. And a few people have suggested that I sort of just put a video together and show exactly how I did it. So that's what we're going to do in this video. Now, first of all, you need to know exactly when the space station is going to pass over your location. So what we do for that is we go to a website called Heavens Above. And first of all, we'll just show you how to do that. Right, so here we are at the Heavens Above website, which is, there's the URL for it. And it's quite simple to work, and it also allows you to, to not only find tracking data for the ISS, but various other objects as well. Um, now, we have to configure it, and it's, it's like I say, it's quite easy. You just basically have to tell it where you are. So what we do is under configuration, we just click on select from map. Once we're on the map, just zoom in on the part of the world that you were in. Now, I'm in a small town near Manchester in the UK called Oldham. And just your town is, you know, is good enough. You, know, you can go right down to your house if you want to, but, you know, just, just going to your town is, is fine. So here we've got Manchester and here we've got my town, Oldham. So you just simply click and it'll place an orange flag there. Next, scroll down a little bit because you've got to tell it what your time zone is. Now, obviously, I'm under GMT because I'm in the UK. So we find United Kingdom, which is GMT. Click on Submit. That will automatically take you back to the main page. So now, for the ISS, all we need to do is click here, 10-day predictions for the ISS. Click there, and we now get a nice little chart, and it gives us the latest 10 days with the dates uh, what the magnitude is which is the brightness of the of the ISS when it passes over and what time it's going to start passing over from the horizon and it also tells you what direction you know sort of west south west west south south west and so once you do see it, it is it's very very bright and I suggest that what you do is just have a few trial runs by eye first of all and trust me you will see it with the naked eye without any problems at all it's usually the brightest object in the sky apart from the moon it's brighter than any of the stars and you can sometimes assume that it's an aeroplane it just doesn't have the flashing navigation lights and as I say if you've looked on heavens above and you've got your time verified and you see this object appear on the horizon and do a straight arc straight over without any deviation in its course it just travels in a straight line from horizon to horizon you know that you've got the the ISS and you know just familiarize yourself like I said just try it by naked eye a couple of times first if you've never done this before uh, and then obviously we're going to need quite a bit of preparation and that'll come next Right, hopefully at this stage you've sort of, you know, you've familiarised yourself with finding how to predict your transits and you've also hopefully just watched it a couple of times to familiarise yourself with sort of how fast it's moving and just how bright it is. And now we've got to do quite a bit of preparation. Now what you want to do is you want to be setting your scope up at least an hour before that transit's due um, because like I said there's a, few, a fair few things that we've got to do to prepare. Now, I'm not going to actually show you um, settings with the mount and everything because if you've got to the stage where you're actually chasing space stations across the sky, I'm hoping that you, you know, you're quite familiar with the controls on your mount and everything. So the first thing we need to do is, like I said, give yourself a good hour. Uh, set your mount up. Now, you don't need to polar align your mount because we're not actually tracking anything as such, um, you know, using sort of polar aligning. Just, you know, make your, your mount as, as a nice solid base for your scope, basically. Uh, the next thing we want to do then is you need to point your scope at a nice bright star and you're going to want to focus beforehand because that space station is traveling at 17,500 miles an hour and you basically get between five and seven minutes from horizon to horizon on a pass and you don't want to be messing about trying to focus and chase and, and set this and set that all at the same time you just you just won't do it um, so just get yourself a nice bright star in the center of your field of view and concentrate on your focus now at this point I used a Batinov mask I just up to my Batinov mask over the end of my scope and, and focused up that way once you've got your focus then you've got to set your camera up 
and what you've got to remember here is that that space station like i said it's traveling it's not like a planet where it's still or the moon you know or, or basically still um so what we're going to need is quite a fast shutter speed now on a webcam uh, especially on the the software that i use which is a piece of software called sharp cap then on a webcam exposure is the same as a shutter speed basically so what we need to do is set your gain first of all on your on your webcam to about the halfway point and then turn down exposure and like i said turning down exposure will speed up your shutter speed and you'll see your star start to get dimmer and dimmer now you want to aim at getting this bright star to just a dim tiny little spot because don't forget the the space stations are a hell of a lot brighter than that star um, so that's doing two things it's not going to wash out the space station which you know it could be a, just a total flood of light if you if you set up for your star basically but also it's giving us that faster shutter speed um, which means we've got more chance of getting a sharp picture of this object as it flies past and trust me it, it flies past so once we've done that the next thing that i did is in sharp cap there's a reticule feature and you can turn on a reticule to overlay on your on your sort of your webcam image on in the software so and then i centered the star and then i calibrated my tell rad to the the image on my screen now if you haven't got a tell rad um trust me just go out and buy one it, it's one of those things tell rad to me is the mobile phone of the astronomy world it's like once you've got one you just wonder how you coped without it basically you know like tv remotes the same so get your tell rad and and you know i mean you can use a finder but you'll find it really hard with a finder it's just not got the same field of view as a tell rad so calibrate your tell rad just controls and 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 just get it exactly centered so that you, your scope and your tell rad are perfectly calibrated now once we're ready for that pass so we've got a nice dim star there like i said before and everything's centered up what you need to do is release the clutches on your on your mount and balance your scope up so release your ra clutch and release your declination clutch and, and just balance that scope because what you need to do is use your scope a bit like an anti-aircraft gun um, you know it's like you're going to shoot something down so you just hope that the police helicopter don't fly over when you're doing this um, so take hold of the scope with the mirror and and support one side of it um, you know like hold on to one of the rings because you want to be looking through the tell rad watching for the space station appear and then chase it and just continually keep moving and try and center that space station in the middle of of your telrad circle um it, it helps this one if you if you've got a partner um not in that way that um will watch your laptop screen and say you know you're on it and with a bit of luck you you know you'll you'll chase it and it will it'll flash on and off the screen it'll be all over the place and you'll get a lot of sort of blank screen don't worry about it you know i mean if you get like 20 frames then you know you're going to get something basically um so what we're going to do next is i'm going to show you the the captures that i did and i'll show you exactly what to do to process it because as i said before it's not a, a motion rate image in in the middle it's going to be sort of shooting about all over the place so that's where we're going to go next okay once you've shot your avi you're going to see a lot of this which is well nothing really and if you've got lucky then every now and again you'll get a flash of the space station as you've just sort of managed to capture it on your chip and if we just watch closely that's what's going to happen next there we go and again and again and believe it or not we've got enough there to actually be able to get an image and if you you know if you saw a sharp eyed you'll see that just in that avi there's there's quite a bit of detail in there and obviously we've also got a lot of empty space a lot of this blackness so when we're going to sort of line these pictures and, and stack them and everything it's going to help a lot if we can remove a lot of these blank frames and that's what we're going to do next i know what you're thinking you're thinking will he show us that same piece of video slowed down so that's what we're going to do next so watch carefully
Okay, the next thing we want to do is remove all the dead wood from our AVI uh, out of maybe a 10 minute AVI. You might only have three or four seconds of, of AVI that's actually got our, our objects on um, the space station. So we need to remove all that. It just makes everything a lot easier for processing. And that's where this piece of software comes in, Virtual Dub. Now, if you're into imaging and especially with AVI, then this is a piece of software that you want to have anyway. It's a free piece of software. Just go to the URL and, and download Virtual Dub. And it's an absolutely brilliant piece of AVI editing software. Also, it helps if you've got the odd AVI that won't work in your Edgy stacks or your, you know whatever stacking program that you're using. You can actually load most of them into, into Virtual Dub and save as an AVI. And it'll actually save it as a proper formatted correct AVI. Um, so you know just a little tip for you the on, on other stuff so once we've downloaded our virtual dub it's time to launch it right we've now downloaded and installed virtual dub now don't worry uh, thinking that it's another piece of software that you've got to learn uh, virtual dub is actually a very powerful feature filled piece of software but for our purposes it's just really easy and the first thing we need to do is to just drag and drop our AVI into the main screen like so. Now when you do that, you'll be given this slider on the bottom which actually splits all the frames of your AVI up. Now with this being quite a large one, it, it also scales so these are to every 100 frames at the moment. And as you shrink your AVI, they will sort of scale down. Now as I said before, you can also use this to, to change AVIs that are incompatible with your, your stacking software, it just happens sometimes, uh, you know, for whatever reason. And in that case, once you've dragged your AVI in, all you need to do is go to File, click File, and click on Save as AVI, and it'll just save it as a standard AVI that will be compatible with your, with your stacking software. Right, so for our purposes, we're going to just have, want to cut out all this dead stuff. Now, as I said, this counts up in 100 frames and I happen to know that sort of oh up until about here there's nothing there we just start to see the space station appear so up to sort of 2800 frames we have nothing whatsoever so I'll move back to the bottom and click on this button that will then select a start point move up to 2800 and click again and that will then highlight this dead section. All we do is move to edit and delete. And it will delete that piece. And as you can see now the scale has started to change as our AVI is sort of shrinking. So what we do is we do the same thing again. We move along with the slider. Until we start to see the space station. Like so back off a little bit set an end mark and again go to edit delete and we keep working on that trying to cut out any dead spots that we can do you don't have to be totally precise so you know like I said just take your time and, and work through just to get the majority of those dead frames out just makes things a little bit easier later Right, as you can see, I've just worked through a little bit of it. Just continue that through your AVI. That's the first stage. Once you've done all that, just simply go to File and Save as AVI. And you'll now get a new, much shorter AVI with a lot less dead area and just all your, your space station shots in. Now, if you come to try and stack this in, in Registacks or your, your chosen piece of software, it's going to struggle because that object is just flying about all over the place. And that's where another little piece of software comes in, and that's where we're going to go next. Right, when we're finished with Virtual Dub, we should have an AVI that looks something like this one. As you can see, almost every frame is, is filled with you know it's got the image of the ISS on we'll just show you that again and as you can see it's jumping about all over the place so what we're going to do next is we're going to just centralize and crop that image to make it a lot easier for our stacking software
Right, we've now come to the website of Emil Crycamp, and I hope I've pronounced that right. Um, he's a, a Dutch astronomer, and he's, he's done a page that's on webcam astrophotography. It's actually very well worth a visit, and so there's the URL for you. Um, now, Emil's wrote a couple of pieces of software. One of them is a stacking piece of software that he's still working on and maintaining, and the other one is a piece of software with the unfortunate name of Castrator. And this is the piece of software that we're going to want. So what we do is download Castrator. But as I said, give Emil's site a, a good looking at because it's it's got a lot of good information on there. So as I said, download and install Castrator, and that's where we're going next. Okay, we're now in the Castrator interface page, and one thing that I really like about this software is that it's actually got a step-by-step -step on the main page of how to work it. So the first thing we do, open your AVI file. So we open our AVI that we just made, like so, and you'll see that it's centered the object there. Now, what we next need to do next is to set the detection threshold. And, and I've just used 23, it, it just works okay. Um, you know, he suggests in the, in the help that you go between 20 and 30 and I just selected 23 and you know it, it basically worked the next thing we need to do is just set a size like so to crop it and I suggest you know not not going too tight on it just just you know make it nice and comfortable um, you know you just cut out the majority of the of the the dead zone if you like and after that all we need to do is set the output now I used a mono modified webcam to capture my AVI so grayscale is fine for me if you've used a color camera then obviously just set to color uh, and it's even got a debayer section in it if you've used a, you know a dedicated CCD camera and the next thing we need to do is just to process the AVI like so it's very very quick and that's it processed and it'll now have made a fresh AVI and and unfortunately the AVIs that Castrator creates won't play in media player and as I discussed earlier about incompatible AVIs I've earlier done exactly the same thing just gone through this process and then just converted one in virtual dub where you know like I discussed and so next I'm just going to show you the completed video after it's been done with Castrator as you can see it's centered it don't worry about that jerkiness that's simply the flicking from one frame to another and what you also see there is that the space station looks like it's twisting it's actually the orientation of the space station changing because we've actually followed it from horizon to horizon its attitude just moves a little bit it's a little bit similar to having rotation errors uh, if you've got what they call a fork mount and again don't worry about it but now you've got an AVI that you can put through your stacking software, which, you know, I use Registacks. And I'm not actually going to stack in this video because there's plenty of other videos, a uh, couple by myself, that show you how to do the stacking. So what we'll do next is I'll just show you the, the final stacked image that I did. And there it is. That's uh, my stacked image of the, the International Space Station. And, you know, it might have seemed like it's a, a little bit laborious working through all those stages and that. It's actually not because the excitement of what you've actually managed to capture, um, you know, which is a tiny, tiny little object that's travelling at 17,500 miles an hour and shooting across the sky. And you've just managed to catch some frames of it to, to get a decent picture. It takes all that away. And, you know, every, every stage becomes quite exciting as, as you work through. And that's about it for this one. So, once again, thanks for watching.